Hi, good evening, gentlemen. You'll, you'll perhaps all know me as the, your secretary. I'm also the state director of Crest New South Wales, which is um, something. And this is all about what we do uh, when we do communications for bike rides, fun runs, marathons, searches, all sorts of things. So a little bit of an introduction. Um, Crest was formed in September 1976, so we're 41 years old. And it was to provide a monitoring service on the, U the recently introduced UHFCB. U yeah, UHFCB when it came in. Uh, we sort of became aware after that that there were other users of this fabulous cheap free radio. Not that they were cheap at the time, but they were still pretty good. And we started doing some communications for sporting events. And the first one we did was the Avon Marathon. And the reason the Avon Marathon came up is that it was coming up as an Olympics event for women. So Avon jumped on the bandwagon and they ran a marathon in Sydney on the northern beaches. And we did the communications all on UHFCB and all simplex. Um, we've developed a lot of stuff since then. And instead of using uh, simplex, we've got a network of repeaters and all sorts of other things. So... I guess, yeah, where am I? Whoops. Um, we run, I should have got this as a PowerPoint. Oops, still too far. Okay, the bulk of repeaters we have are, and crossband units are based on Tate 8100 or 8200 radios. And we use an ARCOM RC210 repeater, of which I have some gear here, which I'll let you all have a look at later. It's not powered up. I don't have a battery for it. And just with those couple of bits of equipment, that's the board that we buy, we've purchased or you, we've got it in the rack here in the 19-inch rack mount version. The uh, repeater itself can allow us for up to three connections. Okay. It can be either three repeaters, three crossband radios or a combination. Uh, the one I've set up here has got uh, two repeaters in it and the third port is currently unused but I'm thinking of putting a um, VHF high band radio on it to act as a, n another arm. So that's the equipment and to make all that work Yeah. Okay, I'll c come on to those. Okay, so we have a UHF, um, rep some repeaters and spoke repeaters and crossband units. Uh, just a term we picked up. Now, to implement all of this gear, apart from our repeaters, we'll, we have three portable masts, which you guys have seen here on the uh, Jota weekends. I've had that as two sections. I can deploy that in the field, eight metres. And we've got a whole pile of handheld radios, of which I've got two there. Now, here's some photos of our mast. Oops, a bit too far. Right, there's our, the ute and mast set up. That's at the... Appen Scout Centre for an event that we did up, they do up there called the uh, Tough Bloke Challenge. And what said I? <laughs> tough Bloke Challenge and Tough Chick Challenge. Can we, can we do the, can we do the crumbs for the Tough Chick one? Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> that's good. The Tough Chick Challenge is good. So that's sort of um, what one of the masts. And then on top of that, I've since put together a pneumatic mast on a, rep on a trailer. So on the left, you've got the uh, mast deployed. This is in my front yard when I first built it up. Uh, it's got some outriggers to stabilise it. And the right-hand photo is uh, just from the top. And you can see we've got two antennas there. The folded dipole is the... Uh, uh, the UHF and the uh, vertical is a VHF 
mid-band collinear, which is 77 megahertz. Now, with all this, this equipment, this isn't going to be all that long, I tell you. Someone told me I did too much, but I don't think I did enough. Now, just looking at this, this is a, like a typical system we can put up. Now, Tim, you asked what a spoke repeater was. Over here, uh, this one here, we have a box that's got a UHF repeater cross-banded to a mobile radio. And I can set the UHF on one of our channels, channel 93 as an example. Then on this side, I've got a similar setup. Again, the VHF mobile is on the same channel, but the UHF is on a different channel. And then our hub repeater will, is two repeaters cross-connected. And I've got those two repeaters here to if you have a look at later. So channel 71 is our VHF midband frequency and that forms the backbone and then at the, like that's the hub, so at the spoke or at the edges of it we have these crossband units. So people in the area of these spokes just with a handheld radio can access the whole system. Uh, that system talks back to our, the headquarters uh, which will have two radios, both the channel 71 and the channel 80, 81 radio. They'll have two, so they've got a backup. One's turned up, one's turned down, or you end up with a lot of squealing. Now we can extend this system a little further with just a crossband unit. Now, all the crossband unit is, is two radios connected back to back. Again, a couple of tates but it'll be simplex, it'll have a few little um, timing and coverage issues because not everybody who can access the crossband can hear each other, so you might have somebody on top. But we try and make everything as a repeater so everyone hears everything that happens across the network. Uh, now, we've got all this on and, for instance, we'll have people out on checkpoints or with handheld radios and as we issue them we set them on the channel they would need to use for the position they're on and I'll, I've got a map coming up pretty soon of, um, of one of the events so anyone we know who's going to be in the area of the spoke repeater channel 93 as they're issued their radios on 93 they carry it to site and they're instantly on the network because we're giving it to people who aren't normal radio operators. So I lock it and I don't, um, don't want them to change. Now while we've got all this running, uh, we'll have people that will need to get around the course. So for that it'll be vehicles and we'll put the vehicles on our VHF channel 71 frequency and that will give them coverage pretty much everywhere. Uh, but not handheld, it'll definitely be mobile. So that, that's typical of one of our systems. So any sort of questions on that? Or? No? What was the oh, 77 megs. We've got, um, we've got a two pair on 77 meg, we've got four pair on UHF, we've got two portable pair on VHF high band and about three or four frequencies for fixed on high band. So we've got quite a few frequencies around the place. No, we don't use CB. No. Uh, the frequencies are 473479 for the split. They're above and below the CB, but they're not on CB. I wouldn't like to try and do this on CB. Oh, no. No, that's not Oh, no. You get problems with CB users. You get problems with CB users even when you're not trying to do something. So that's our system. Now... One of the big events we do is a Convict 100. A Convict 100 is a 100 kilometre mountain bike race and they have two other races. They do a 44 and a 68k race all on the same, same course but obviously not the same distance. And our, the crest involvement was 15 years ago when it first started. The first ever event, they relied on the... Uh, St Albans Rural Fire Service for their communications. Now, all they had to offer was a um, Channel 1 CB repeater that was pretty iffy. 
and a HF frequency that belonged to the local real estate agent. They were not allowed to use RFS channels to do this sort of event. And even if they did, they still couldn't have done it because they don't cover the areas that we're on. So our first involvement was to get three points that were difficult, and we did them with HF, 7.326 megahertz, using NVIS. We had a dipole mounted about that high off the ground, and it's amazing. It got over the hill quite well. Uh, I have a problem with 7.326 now. It's now a international broadcast frequency with several high power stations in China using it. But I'll keep the frequency because it has, it, has its uses. From that we started developing VHF midband. So the first time we did it we put a VHF midband repeater on a point and we had mobiles around the place and we got the major checkpoints. We've since developed that to... Um, eh, I've got to repeat there, don't worry. Uh, we've since developed that to the system as per that diagram before and we can do handheld comms and we will develop that a bit further for the next year. Uh, so looking at this um, application Oops, uh, one too many Right, there's the course for the um, whole event. Now, it all starts just there in St Albans. And our repeater points, we have... Oh, up about here, we've got our hub repeater. And that's this box here. Then we put a spoke repeater over here. We've had another spoke repeater over here. And we've had a crossband unit down here. Now those points are for the crossbands or the, for the spoke repeaters are on re very high points. So for instance, the spoke repeater up here will give them comms on those two points, that point, that point, that point and almost those two. So at those two points we might have to put something else in. The crossband unit here is at the river crossing. Now the river crossing we've got to put 1500 bikes across a river and the river crossing consists of a whole series of um, kayaks and some builders planks. Now the planks you put on scaffolding about this wide, two of those and they had too many people falling off, so they decided to make it four. Now nobody falls off, so that's not a very fun point to be on. It's very boring. Yep. It's three. Uh, so easy. So, yeah, that's, and it was going in the other direction at that stage too, but uh, they've done a change to a cap, of course. So that uh, bridge is a point where there's usually a bit of action, not so much now, so we'll put a bit of a crossband in there, and that crossband will get back out to this point, and this point here, which is called Shepherd's Gully. And from Shepherd's Gully, we've got no people on the course until we get up here to this point, and at this point, we've actually got direct communications back to our hub, which is up in this area. So that one's not too bad. But down here, this is called 10 mile hollow. Now 10 mile hollow is exactly a hollow. So the crossband units or the spoke repeater in this area on instead of UHF, last year we made the one there a VHF high band. And that high band gave us communications right up to this point and maybe further, we don't know. Uh, the fact of life with this course is once you get to this point here, which is called Clare's Bridge, there is no vehicular access until you get to here. So that entire length of the course, we have no vehicular access, no radio communications, and no helipads. The it's a track through the forest. And 
Now, it's re do you ever, anyone hear of the uh, the Great North Road, the, the main road out of Sydney built by convicts to get to Newcastle? That's it. Not anymore. I know, but National Parks blocked it off. And as soon as they blocked it off, it all just fell to pieces. So there's been moves to try and get it up, up and running, but I don't think it ever will. But I'm planning for next year to put something in this area, which if I use high band, link it back to the system, will give me handheld coverage right along that track. There's a high risk that somebody will get hurt, and in fact we've had injuries up here on the top end, but fortunately they've got a uh, four-wheel drive, not a... Not a big vehicle, but it's a, like a uh, yeah, like a big quad bike. Um, Polaris, yeah, a Polaris. They got they got that in. Well, you can see all the 1K blocks. It's a standard um, standard one in 25,000. So they give you an idea of what the course is. Um, so now with this point here, I have VHF communications from our hub site down here and also at this point here now not up the trail, oh bits on the trails, the high points but to those, com to those points oh no no no, no he, we'll give him another car next time um, the road up to 10 mile hollow is not bad you could get through but I wouldn't like to put yours on it um, the four-wheel drive trails into here are quite horrendous, down this one here, and also the one up along here, that part there into the bush is quite horrendous. So for all those major points, our little repeater running 10 watts gives us really good coverage for mobiles. Uh, now the course, that's the whole course. There's a group that'll get to here and follow the blue line and then from there come back this way back into town and another group will get to here and follow that red line back into town. So that's the 44, 68 and the other one's the 100. The first few times, we, or up until the last couple of years, this course has run in the opposite direction and this point here called the split point, the 100k riders turned right, the 50k riders turned left. That we would have to get one and sometimes two helicopters to pull people out with very major injuries because the, the fire trail coming in has got sort of jumps like that solid rock to solid rock it's got trees across it it's got all sorts of things and um, communications up there is mandatory just to get those casualties out four wheel drive okay the so to set all that up, okay, we'll set that up with five, a total of about five, five repeaters, different formats, crossband units, and we put the RFS, that they do all the marshalling, we just help them out with comms. Um, and that is how the event goes. So it's just using all of our basic gear that we can roll out almost anywhere. Okay, so the places where we put things, we've got Blue Hill, which is the main repeater, off Jack's track. Now, Jack's track, you don't get up unless you've got a, real, a re relatively good four-wheel drive. The Kayak Bridge, anyone can go there. The Checkpoint 13 and 10 Mile Hollow, uh, it's not quite four-wheel drive, but it's still a bit on the uh, thing. Now, for setting all this up, we need to make a trip out there to do radio checks. So we'll go out sometime February, March, April and get access to all the trails and have some fun four-wheel driving. We'll set a couple of repeaters up and we'll do some checks to make sure that um, the coverage is as we want it. For the event, we turn up on the weekend prior and we erect our masts just check that the antennas and everything are pointing in the right direction and um, tape them up and leave them and then on the week of the event we turn up on Friday and we go in on Friday and actually install the repeaters, connect them up and then do a radio check for as much as we can and get the headquarters set up. 
So that's sort of the strategy we take. It's quite a large event. Now, apart from this event, we did another event at um, Condoblin called the Condo 750. Much bigger scale, but it's all flat. We used exactly the same gear and we installed it and it just did not work. We found that on the site that we put our hub repeater, our VHF midband, we were sharing a frequency with the local police who had a repeater on that site. So needless to say it uh, all fell into a pile of poo. But once we worked out what the problem was we just swapped two units over and the system worked perfectly for the following day. So fortunately we didn't get too many calls but we managed to handle them all. And Nah, they didn't. We, we weren't interfering them, they were interfering us. Was it on the same frequency? Yeah, yep, it was on the same frequency. We actually heard them coming out of uh, one of our radios. Whoops. So, uh, no, it's not an ACMA screw up. It's um, the frequencies we use are shared by police and a few other services for VHF mid-band. Uh, I just have to be careful and do my due diligence that whenever I re roll something out as a portable, I'm not interfering with anyone. Yeah, so I've got a, yeah, I've got a, yeah. So I've got two frequency pair. I've got one on the Central Coast and I use the same frequency in Sydney and Singleton and my portable licenses are on the same frequencies. They don't do that anymore. They've allocated a, a block now for portable and a block for fixed. But the police are migrating off it, so hopefully that won't be a problem for much longer. So that's, in, in essence, what we'll do to um, set up any of these sort of systems. Any questions or anybody want to double check anything? Uh, to keep it working, I've probably got six to eight people out there, but the RFS will maybe put 30 or 40 people on the ground. And they're, they're the ones that do the operations. We just ha do the hard points and have a um, uh, vehicle available to do fault finding, troubleshooting, or whatever else we need. Jeff's been up, Bruce has been up, yeah, been a couple of times. So, so it's all good fun. It's better four wheel driving than it is radio. Yes, they man the radio. So I hand out handhelds to people on all the checkpoints. Um, in fact, you can actually see num see the little round white circles with the checkpoint numbers, so they'll have somebody on one of those. The ones that are hard, we might put a vehicle on, or we might give someone a mobile to go on that point. And with the mobiles, I've just got a, a lead I can throw on the battery with a power pole on it, a length of cable, a radio, magnetic base, um, you can set it up in five minutes and we can put them on, on site. The medical vehicles will fit two or three of those up with mid-band radios, so they've got comms wherever they go, which is quite useful. Um, and yeah, there we have it. So that's uh, our system. This is gonna be a short one, isn't it? So future developments, I'm looking at, whoops, um, I'm migrating from mid-band to high-band because I find high-band, the radios are smaller. I can get handhelds for a reasonable price. Uh, mid-band handhelds, you're looking at a couple of thousand bucks and the antenna is about that big. And okay. High-band high is one, 160, a bit above the two metre, sorry. Yeah, they all use that. I'll interfere with them wherever they go. Uh, I've got about 50 UHF handhelds. Uh, this one's one I use mostly. It's a Vertex Standard 426. I've got 25 of those sitting in a box. And I've got a small, and I've got another 20 odd radios of a different brand. Plus, I've got these dual band ones that the UHF and VHF, VHF high band. Uh, and I'm trying to develop, get a few more of these. So they're all type approved? Definitely. They're all type approved. Every radio I have in my, in my um, kit are type approved. 
I have to do that or Brendan might jump on down, up and down on me. Uh, I'm looking at some DM, VHF dual band DMRs. I've got two UHF DMR radios to play with, but uh, the company that's doing them is looking for a new dual band because this one's been discontinued and we're putting pressure on him to see if, he, if the dual band he gets is DMR, but he's having some issues with the Chinese companies because of they're suing each other over patent infringements. To, no, they're not Motorola's patents. They're the European patents for DMR. Uh, but high, HYT and another company are having some sort of patent patent uh, dispute. So that's pretty much everything we do for our field events. Uh, we can do it a bit wider. We can do it a bit smaller. In fact, on the weekend, I'll just put one repeater up, hand out radios, and sit back and watch it all happen in the lower Blue Mountains. It's uh, always a good good event. Maybe four people from us and hand out about a dozen radios to some of the operators. You're going to be able to get into that 10-mile hollow? Using that yeah, 10-mile hollow. Like yeah. Well, I'll put a I'll put a crossband somewhere to get into 10-mile hollow. It won't go directly. The VHF midband just makes it, but you need a 3-metre mast. Now, it just fact of life and it's just not practical so it's easier to put the crossband in and then you've got multiple people down there with handheld radios and they can all get back into the uh, control center the rfs run the control center so don't have to worry about that i just drop the gear in and let them use my radios um, and then i've got an event coming up in a, another three weeks which is the hounslow classic you know that one do you um Hounslow Classic. No. Uh, Wilderness are doing the doing it. It's uh, up around Blacksland somewhere. Apparently, Wyson aren't weren't available for the weekend. Got something else on, so we're doing it. Yeah, I think that's what it is. Yeah. What is it? What sort of thing is it? It's a cross-country marathon, and by cross-country through the Blue Mountains, it's really a lot of upping and downing. So we'll put something in for that, and that, so it goes. So any any sort of questions, or so I've pretty much run out of what I'm doing on this. So, so there's, there's a lot of gear. Hmm? Who pays for it? How do you fund it? Oh. <laughs> um, <laughs> the, the the companies that the adventure race companies uh, we get donations from. Uh, I try not to press them too much, but when I need it, I'll ask for a donation. And typically, Max Adventure, um, I got a batch of handheld radios from the SES. The batteries were dead. Gary, I need some batteries rebuilt. So he paid for the battery rebuilding. Um, Gary, there's a ute available that I need. So he paid for the ute. Uh, when the licensing conditions changed and we had to narrow band our UHF radios, uh, he dipped his hand in his pocket and paid for 20 new, new, uh, brand new radios, all of these. So I get those sorts of donations. Um, uh, we do a job for Oxfam. Oxfam drop a bucket of money on the table for us as well because of the time we do, the equipment we use, so on. So that's where most of our funding comes from. Uh, in Newcastle, they do, um, there's an event in the Hunter Valley called the Wallenby Wild Ride and, um, he'll, and it's run by H Events and he'll drop a donation onto the group for doing that. So yeah, that's where, that's where we get most of our money from those sorts of donations. We get a little bit of government money filtered down through the Volunteer Rescue Association but that's not a substantial amount but it's not it's not something I'll say no to, but it's still money, you know, money coming in. So that's where all of our money comes from. So this is all part of a big organisation, right? Crest New South Wales. No, we're a group of about 60-odd people, but we're affiliated with the Volunteer Rescue Association, as is Wyson, as is um, Bush Search and Rescue, and um, a stack of other groups. There's Cave Rescue, there's... Hawkesbury River Marine Rescue, there's Ski Patrol, there's um, another one up the far north coast who do the, do the rescues in the rivers, you know, the kayakers. 
then you've got all the road crash rescue squads in the country that uh, are all part of the same organisation. That's where we all belong. So if you want to have a quick look at this, you can see the... Oh, yes, sir. So are you registered as a not-for-profit organisation? Yes. Okay. Yes. Mm. Mm. Mike wants to talk to you, <laughs> <laughs> can't, You can't do it for here. <laughs> So now, yeah, we're registered as a not-for-profit organisation, and one of the side benefits of that is um, our radio licensing is at a very good price. Yeah, it's so. really impressive what Des and his team can do. The conduct, it's very hilly, rugged terrain, and making it easy for people who are not familiar with radios. Hmm. Like if you listen to the comms on the day, it runs very, very smoothly. It's very good now. Yeah. So next question, apart from the name, what association do you have with the uh, CB at all? Uh, we still nationally monitor CB. They do around Newcastle, Singleton. I've got, people still do it, yeah, it's still a little bit, but there's not a lot happening on it. Uh, we'll probably get a few people up in um, the New England because they're moving some five, Channel 5 repeaters around and we're helping them do that. So we could get a few people up there. But that... We still do, we still do monitor, but in Sydney, definitely not. Newcastle and some of the country areas we do. Okay. There's how many of these do you do a year? You sound like you're very busy. Yes. Uh, there's a very busy period. We do probably one in February, then. Uh, April, May, we'll get a couple. Then now we've got one every couple of weeks until the end of uh, yeah uh, through winter. The um, the, country, the the bush events through winter are quite quite prolific. So and we'll also go up and help with Newcastle. I'll go up and help with um, one in Singleton called the Mail Run. That's a hundred kilometre bike ride around the roads. There's so many things happening. And, and we've just been asked to do another one uh, called the Coalface Run, which is a fundraiser for the um, rescue helicopter in Newcastle. So they've got to a point now where they say, oops, if something happens, we're in big trouble. So they've asked us to do the comms for them. That's a bike ride. That's another bike ride. Yeah. And the guy who runs the bike ride has been on the Wallen by Wild ride, so he knows us from that. Um, then yeah, we'll work with SES, with the RFS, with anybody else who wants to come in. Um, I can drop a radio in somebody's car in a matter of 10 minutes. Get it up on here. Yeah, we talk to Wyson. Throw rocks at each other. Um, now, what, what Wyson and Cresta, yeah, do do, do 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 things together. It sounds like yours is a bit more professional. Ah, Wyson do a good job. Some of our members are also Wyson members. So. Yeah, there's no... There's commercial operators that also do this. Are there? Commercial operators that also do this. Yeah, your boss does. <laughs> your boss does this, this sort of work. But the commercial operators, you know, would be probably giving a radio to every competitor in the event. So I know there were some done in, in South America where there was repeaters on tops of hills and the competitors had a radio and whenever they got in trouble they could break the seal on the radio and make a call but then they were disqualified from the event. We don't go to that extent. So we, we just provide radios for the, for the event officials, for safety and for uh, logistics. Okay. Next. That's it. Thank you for coming. Thank you.